Hello, my name is Rita and I am a mechanical engineer at Saratech. Today I'm going to show you how to define a deformable component within an assembly. If you have ever wanted to add a component to an assembly and show it in more than one form, such as open or closed or compressed or uncompressed, then the defining a deformable component is a perfect tool in NX to do that. To define a deformable component in an assembly, you must first add the deformable component to the assembly then you want to define the deformable component, and you can actually do this either before or after you add it to the assembly. And lastly, you want to edit the deformable component in the assembly to the desired shape. So to demonstrate this feature, I'm going to be inserting a spring into an assembly as a component, and then defining that spring to be a deformable component capable of taking on many compressed lengths. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a component, We're going to name it and click OK. I'm going to select the component spring and make it my working part. Next, we're going to create an expression that defines the length of the spring. Now that we have the, that expression, I'm going to insert a helix around the rod. We're going to use the spring length expression to define the features of the spring. I'm going to add a little bit more thickness to, to the spring by using the tube feature. We can add a diameter thickness and set it to a single segment spring type. So the next thing I'm going to do is add two datum planes, one towards the top and then one towards the bottom of the spring. Um, and we're going to use the XY plane as a reference to add those in. Now for the top datum plane, we're going to use the spring length expression to distance it. So once those datum planes are um, created, we're going to be using those planes to trim any excess of spring from the top and bottom. So we now see that the spring is only located between the top and bottom datum planes. We're now going to define the deformable component. So if we go to the menu in tools, there's a define a deformable part selection. We're gonna select all of our features and our spring length expression. We're going to set minimum and maximum values to that. So 
So we're now going to select the assembly as the working part and add in our assembly constraints. We're going to use a touch align constraint with an infer center axis. So we're going to select the face of the spring and the face of the plate. We're also going to select the z-axis of the spring and then the center line of the rod. So now that our assembly constraints are in place, we're able to deform the part. To deform, we're just going to right-click on the component spring and select deform. We can select our desired length, and we can see here that the spring deforms to our desired length. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.